What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I'm here to do another review video today, but before I get started, a note to my subscribers. I've heard you loud and clear. I know that the, these review videos are not the most popular content, so I promise this is going to be the last review video that I do for quite some time. So moving on, this product is from a company called Max Oak out of China, and it is a 400 watt hour portable power bank or power station and it costs 369 US dollars off of Amazon. There's nothing special about the packaging, although it is a pretty big box for the size of the power bank. As you'll see here in a second, that's because it comes with a lot of stuff in the box. Now this is a very rare site here. It actually comes with a warranty card with the serial number and some information about this particular unit. So I feel a little bit better about possibly getting warranty support and customer service from the manufacturer with this product than most any other Chinese product that I've ever reviewed. Next up is a user manual which is actually decent. It's not um, that really bad Chinese translated to English that you typically get. It does uh, have a pretty clear table of contents and clear labeling and clear instructions and troubleshooting and things like that. So they definitely get an A plus here compared to most similar products. Now on top in these three boxes are all of the power adapters and cords and cables that you need to work with this unit. First up is a 12 volt output cable which allows you to plug in any cigarette lighter adapter type device that you would normally use in a car. And next is an output cable to connect USB-C devices. Please note that while this device has many regular USB outputs, it does not come with a regular USB cable. It only comes with the newer USB-C style. And moving on, we have some input cables. This is MC4 connectors that will connect a solar panel into this unit for charging with solar power. And we have an input cable that will be used to charge this device in your car with a cigarette lighter. It also comes with, and this is fairly rare for these devices, but it does come with jumper cables to jump start your vehicle. So that's a nice feature that a lot of these power packs do not have. And last but not least, we have the requisite power cable uh, for charging this device with a normal American 110 volt wall receptacle. So now here's the power bank itself. On the front is a on off button which you just hold down and then it lights up the LCD screen and you can tell uh, the output, the input, and the, char the state of charge of your battery. Next to the on off switch you also have a DC on switch and an AC on switch which allows you to output either DC power or AC power. And as you see on the left and right sides, you have your 110 volt AC outputs for the American style connectors. On the left side of the unit, you have two ports. The one on the left is the 12 volt DC input port, which can accept the cable from a solar panel. It can also accept the cable from your cigarette lighter in your car. So if you wanted to charge this device mobile with your car, you would use this cord. And finally, it will also accept the AC adapter, which converts the 110 volt AC into 12 volt DC. On the right side is where you plug in the jumper cables if you wanted to jump start your car. And they're keyed, so you can only put them in the right way, so don't worry about connecting them backwards. Which leads us to the right side of the unit where all the rest of the ports are. And the bottom on the middle is the USB-C output, which is a 18 watt max output. On bottom, on the left and the right, you have two 12 volt DC outputs. One of them is 5 amps at max output on the left, and the one on the right is 10 amps max output. And that is obviously where you'd use that cigarette lighter adapter cable. The rest of the ports on the top are all regular USB ports divided into three rails that can handle 3.5 amps each. As with all devices that ship with lithium batteries inside, it will come partially discharged, so you will need to plug it in to fully charge it up before you use it. All right, enough about the features and specs. Let's look at what this thing can actually do. All of my review videos, I always test something in a real world scenario to see what it'll do and to see if the manufacturer is lying to us about its specs. So what I'm doing is plugging in a pedestal fan into a watts up meter and plugging that into the power pack which is fully charged. I'm going to turn the fan on full blast and show you how many watts it's consuming and then we're going to let it go until it runs out and then I'll do some math and show you whether this is properly rated or not. OK, 
Okay, the power pack is empty and the fan has shut off. I would have liked for there have been uh, a warning beep, but there it wasn't, so it just shut off immediately. So keep that in mind, you will need to kind of keep an eye on the state of charge meter. Okay, so let's do some math. I started this at 12.18 p.m. and ended at 5.06 p.m. So that's almost five hours. It consumed an average of 70 watts, and so the basic math on that, 4.8 hours times 70 watts equals 336 watt hours. Now compare that to the 400 watt hour factory rating, and I would say that this device is a little bit overrated from the factory. The only way you're gonna get 400 watt hours out of this thing is by using it to charge very small portable electronics that don't draw very much power. However, at only 369 US dollars, it's still a pretty good bargain. You're still getting about $1 per watt, and that's pretty much the gold standard with these devices. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit your alerts icon so that you don't miss out on any notifications on my channel.